up YouTube Zuki M1 here and I am back with a brand new YouTube video so in case you guys have missed it today we got the uh, premiere for Gwen uh, she has a brand new keyword that brand new keyword is called hollowed I believe it should be yep hollowed so um, what it does is is that um, whenever a hollowed unit dies um another uh i think it's another unit gets what does it do again dang that that dang i don't have it on me right now it let me just pull it up real quick somewhere uh new key word hollow Yeah, I guess the best way to explain it is that when a unit dies, they uh, buff another hollowed unit by plus one. Um, Gwen levels up when she's dealt 10 damage, which is actually a pretty generic uh, level up condition, which I was talking about in another YouTube video, if you guys uh, saw that, where I was uh, speaking on the fact that Riot is sticking to the trend of releasing champions that are around the mark of like four or five. You, it, I haven't seen a unit be anything higher than four or five in some sets. Like it's been quite a while since anything has been higher than four. Actually, the last champion that was released that was higher than five was Malphite. Malphite was the last unit that was released that was higher than five. Um, and that, you see how successful that unit has been. Anywho, back on to the new stuff. Um, Gwen is going to be a powerhouse. Um, basically, what she does is, is that every time that you um, that a unit gains power from Hollowed, she does as well and she drains the nexus for two then when she levels up for every two points of power she has she drains for one so if you have 10 power she's draining for five that's insane <laughs> like that is absolutely insane and like I said, it's super diverse. You can put her into any region, any set, anywhere. And she can find a tremendous amount of success. Because all she has to do is just deal damage. That's it. Right? Uh, you can put her in Demacia. You can put her in, uh, in Noxus. You can put her literally anywhere you would want to put her. So if you're a fan of Gwen, you can put her in any region and she'll find success. So these two things right there, the ones that don't have numbers to it, those are her skills. So the first skill is this one right here for her first level, which is Snip Snip. And that just drains two from the enemy nexus, right? When she levels up, it's Snip 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 Snip, which is the, I don't know if you guys play Gwen and, uh, League of Legends, but it's that uh, it's that really really fast animation when she'd be like, <laughs> I mean, if you play the game, you would know. Um, then her uh, champion spell, which is kill an ally to deal damage equal to his power to the enemy. Uh, so the best way to put it is like you're using atrocity without using atrocity into the nexus which makes sense like it costs three if this was a three cost atrocity not only would atrocity be the worst spell ever but Gwen would be literally in every single deck because then everybody has an atrocity win, uh, win condition essentially then we got boisterous host just uh, one drop for the deck drop it it dies you're expecting it to die 
That way you can buff the next hollow unit that you summon. Uh, Eternal Dancers. I feel like this is not going to be used that much inside of Gwen deck. I feel like this is going to be used way more within a Hecarim deck. Just solely off the effect. The effect is attack, revive an attacking ephemeral copy of the strongest dead ally other than them with my power or less so basically what that means is because it's a lot of text for no reason at all basically bring back a copy of a unit that died the strongest unit that you summoned so far and then make it ephemeral and it has to equal my power so you can't she would never summon a unit that's stronger than her but if you buff her power so like make it a 10 drop she can revive anything 10 or less basically so that's basically what they're saying right there it's a lot of text for a very simple effect really um ghostly paramount it's just a lifesteal unit and hollow again staying with the with the archetype um they made a last breath unit so this is going to be the main target that you're going to be looking for with uh thread and needle to tribute him to deal four to another unit without having to battle because uh Demacia is really the only region that has the ability to fight units off the bench so this could really help target units on the enemy's bench that they got sitting over there this one is just going to summon two ephemeral uh creatures these ghastly bands right here uh the two one one drops pretty useful uh, I still think that this is going to be used in a lot in like either a Hecarim deck or a Lucian deck or maybe even just a, a Hecarim Lucian deck. Maybe it might be a uh, secret support and they didn't even know it. Um, the Phantom Butler is a 3-1 with Fearsome. This I feel like is definitely needed because there's so many chunk blockers in the game that guys like him that would normally hurt can't really afflict any damage just because anybody can block it right but having fearsome forces them to have to block with big units so you're going to be able to deal that damage most of the time unless they got something to ping it like um foul feast pokey stick or you know an assortment of other spells to ping it for one um, and then the last of Gwen's revealed support, which is formal invitation, create copies in the hand of two allied followers that died this game. So looking at the entire game, you can copy two allies that died. I don't know if they're going to do it like invoke where they allow you to pick from a list of creatures or they just go randomly select two of the followers for you. That's yet to be seen, but hopefully it's the first one where they let you pick which followers to uh, pick and then grab back, especially if it's like late game, that could be a super powerful card. Um, and then some of the other reveal cards that they have from the other sets. This stuff I'm super excited about, to be honest. And I feel like this stuff is going to go into a lot of different decks, but I'm not exactly sure where. If I had to guess, I'm pretty sure this is probably going inside of an Evelyn's deck because they're all different regions, if you see. So you got Shadow Isles, Demacia, Ionia, Noxus, Freljord, Targon, right? All of these are like all the regions that we have available right now. So that just really heavily implies that Evelyn is going to be a world walker, just like, um, just like Bard, just like Jen. She's going to be the third one that is a multi-region champion. That I'm, I'm, quote me on this. I honestly believe in a heart of hearts that Evelyn is going to be a world walker. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I, I promise you, I believe in my heart of hearts that Evelyn is going to be a world walker. But that's just me. Uh, another really cool card that they came out with for Demacia that I felt like they needed for quite some time. I'm surprised it took them this long. Is Royal Decree. Uh, give a unit 2-2 two, two, and Challenger this round. Uh, or you can summon the Honor Lord. The old man that uh, if he challenged a unit. Uh, grain Barrier. Well, not grant, but give 
him barrier because you can't grant barriers. They don't stay forever. Uh, morale support. This is for the Shin deck. Uh, basically, it reduces his cost. Uh, this is going to be really, really powerful. Just solely off the fact that uh, if you got Shen face up on the board and she's face up on the board, she gives herself a barrier. Shen is going to give somebody else a barrier. And then you can put this onto the Shen for another barrier. That's three barriers off a smooth curve, basically. So it's going to go turn one. You can drop... Um, you can drop sparring student or just hard pass turn, right? Turn two, you drop the kinku student. Turn three, you either bank or you swing or you can use prismatic barrier because chances are you're still going to use this with Demacia. And then turn four, you drop Shin. He puts a barrier on another unit. She puts a barrier on herself. And then you can activate more. I mean, well, Shen is going to have the barrier from the get go. But now you got a two cost. Uh, yeah, two cost barrier that's ready to pop at any point in time. That's going to be super strong. Um, then they also gave like Piltovers. Some of the dumbest shit I've ever seen. It says Grant, a ally, elusive. So. Elusive is already a fucking problem. But now they're saying we're going to grant it elusive and when it hits the nexus, draw one card. What? Suzuki. What? Bro, do you not hear me doing the video? Please. Never mind. That, that, that is bonkers. That is absolutely bonkers. Like, that is crazy that they would give that type of... Um, it's random. I don't think it's random, bro. It's just too good. Like, what the fuck were they smoking? This is three calls to give somebody elusive. And a draw one just for hitting the Nexus. People pay three mana to summon the um the uh Shadows Disciple. The the chick that costs three, she's an elusive unit, she's two one. Uh when she's played, draw one card. That's literally this, except it's permanent now, and I can keep drawing every time I hit the Nexus. That's crazy. Um, then uh, Mikhail's Blessing, grants an ally, plus one damage, plus two health, and remove any negative keywords, just like the actual item in League of Legends. A lot of people don't actually know about this item, but it's a support item. That supports take to support their AD when they get CC to high hell. So, just you know, give me a little backstory on that. Uh, more, uh, more of the Evelyn support. I, I, I think it's Evelyn support because ain't no way you're gonna be able to play all this. Basically, when uh, you are play these, and when you play these, you drop a unit, and whatever unit you drop after these, they inherit their keywords. So this guy got tough. This person got elusive. This person got uh, challenger, uh, rejuvenation, and fury. What the fuck? How the fuck does a character have? How does a non dragon have fury? Okay. <laughs> um. Then frozen and fear new frostbite support. Uh, basically, every time you frostbite, you're gonna be able to get a rimfang, and that rimfang is gonna get bigger. With each frostbite that you did in the game. And then it only costs four. So this could be like a super late game card that's super cheap actually. So you don't have to commit that much. And so if someone negates it, like right at negation or deny, you can play like two or three more of these because they only cost four. Um, grant an enemy frostbite. Uh, no, grant an enemy frostbite me at the next round start. Uh, so. It's a setup card, and it's supposed to help with this, and help to level up your Ash. I don't think this is that good, though, and I don't see a lot of people using this. I, I think this is just like one of those filler cards that they released during the set that just supposed to fill up the, um, the pack, basically, you know. Uh, Captured Yeti. This is actually going to be really big. It's going to go into the LeBlanc deck, so this is... Um, 
Riot actually um, honoring the fact that LeBlanc Yetis is a real deck, right? So when you use LeBlanc Yetis, he's going to cost three, and he's just a three cost, five, five unit. Really cheap, very powerful. Nothing else needs to be said. This card is fucking awful. <laughs> it's supposed to be something that's supposed to be cool or like you the original one only heals one ally and heals the nexus for three this one says when you play me heal all of my units on board but it's dog water like it's fucking garbage do not waste your time with this card you will be highly disappointed they literally make this a five cost heal everybody that's for only four damage and six health. Like, bro, the other unicorn, Stellicorn, is five, six. What are they smoking? This shit is off. But, yeah. Uh, more of the Hush stuff. Kaisa, if you guys haven't, I, I've, I've talked off Kaisa's ear immensely. Like, I got two other videos about her, so I'm not going to say anything else about her. If you want to hear anything I have to say about Kaisa, go watch the other two videos. It's in my League of, uh, Legends of Ruin Terror video. You can go watch it there. Um, and the last few cards, we got Wild Claw Ferocity. Transform an ally follower into an alpha wildcat. This is also fucking dog water. This is, this is just fucking bad. <laughs> this is just bad. Um, Trifarian Training Pit. Each round, the first time an ally with plus five power attacks. Oh my god. Bro. What the ever living fuck is this card? Are they high? Right. 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 What are y'all doing? You can't give Noxus a rally card like this. Bro. Oh my god. And it says the first time each round they uh, an ally with first, uh, plus five power attacks rally. So you know what that means, right? You just put this shit inside the Demacia deck, use Cataclysms, and you got free rallies for days, bro. Fuck using a uh, cataclysm on um on scout units now we just need big big boys big boys stumping in my air force one big boys boy oh my god that's crazy that's crazy that's absolutely crazy this, uh, this is the the card i'm most excited about right here this is cracked oh my god um Lord Elders Magic uh, Mage Seekers Leader. Other allies and your Nexus have tough. Yo, that's crazy. That's not like insanely good because he costs eight, but like that's that's really good actually. They finally gave another unit outside of um Lissandra the ability to make your Nexus tough. That's really cool. The, the thing is, is that he's a follower, so he has more stuff to counter him. You got the, the one drop that Targon can generate to silence him. You got Demacia with the, the card that he's, act, that he's actually wearing called Purification. That can silence him. And then you also got Hush. And uh, the four cost in Targon of Well, that can Hush him, so... That's why I'm not like super, super over the top excited about him, but he's he's a pretty good unit. Um, and then we got Wind Sweep, Wind Swept Heal Lock. When I'm summoned, draw a Yasuo and stun the strongest enemy. When you gain the attack token, uh, stun the strongest enemy. So it's a Yasuo support card, and I cost five. It's not that good. If this was three, oh my god, Yasuo is in the fucking matter. Yasuo is in the fucking matter. But this at five, nah, nah. That's nothing. To get, that's nothing to write home about. That's not that good. Um, and then Starhound Pack. My faded buffs are granted to all other copies of this card everywhere. 
So if you generate extra copies of it, no matter how big this thing gets, all the other copies are going to be that big. This card is going to be a fucking menace and definitely going to help out Pantheon, uh, Faded Pantheon again. Like, it's definitely going to make him into a, a relevant deck again. Definitely do not sleep on this card at all. Keep them silences on deck. Keep them motherfucking, what's it called? It's on deck because them vengeance is wow. on deck because this motherfucker is going to be massive. And then the last card is another husk. This one gives spell shield. So in total, you can get spell shield, um, fury, rejuvenation, uh, challenger, elusive, and tough. That is a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six different keywords that you can generate for a unit. So, and that's the video. Um, I'm gonna do a quick. Uh, well, no, I'm gonna just call it right here. So, uh, if you guys were watching this, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Check out my other videos, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.